thank you guys so much for talking with us. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having us. We're excited. Absolutely. It's great to have you because talking to Judas, I mean, you're you're basically the baddie of oh, the yeah. chosen. Like how I did said. it how did it feel kind of taking on that role in season three, introducing us, you know, to you in that way? Oh, it was just exciting. I was <laughs> I know everyone's expecting like a a big detrimental weight of like questions like ah it was very difficult I was like no no it was extremely fun getting to be a part of this fantastically kind and welcoming cast and it was great to have an entire season of just following along the journey just mm. being one of the disciples and just getting to know the more casual side of this character it was, it was great and that is one of the beautiful things i think about what you've done with judas because you know often obviously he is the bad guy but mm. then you bring a humanity to him that i think is a little bit unexpected oh thank you i appreciate that <laughs> i don't sometimes i've actually talked to the guys before about yeah. this i'm like oh am i even doing that much I, I don't even know i'm just going out there being my like goofy like youthful, innocent self, like just the... But I think that's such a cool aspect of Judas because everyone does expect just the result of what he is, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Versus this kid who wants to do the best that he can and be a part of the group. Mm. And I think Luke brings that so beautifully to the show. What is the dynamic of the group like coming into season four? On a personal level, I mean, we're all very silly guys, I would say. <laughs> we joke around a lot. Maybe all of much. us... Let's say again? Maybe too much? Maybe a little too much sometimes, <laughs> little yeah. Little you know, much. we all kind so of live in this realm of nerdy cool, I guess, you know? <laughs> so like we talk about board games, we play board games, but we're also into sports and mm -hmm. you know, it's 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 a... Sometimes we play sports. Sometimes very, we play sports. Yeah. Very poorly <laughs> yeah. in the parking lot. Jordan is kind of like the athlete of the group, I oh would say. Goodness. Just right. you, okay. diving you into the dirt. A chance to guess which one of us was the most athletic and you'd had like this weird instinct to pick little James, you'd be right. Mm -hmm. It was little James yeah, this entire time. Yeah, it's little James. Wow. And yeah. so, and character wise, the disciples in the last season, it was very much about the theme of what does it cost to follow Jesus? Mm. What does that actually look like? Season four, what would you think is the overarching idea behind the, the disciples' experiences this time around? I feel like that cost is come to pay now. We're learning the cost and now we are paying the cost in this season. Everything's come to a head and we're having to deal with the consequences mm. of building this new ministry that's come to upset a lot of people. Yeah, I would agree with that. In this season, um, Jesus' message becomes a lot more radical, you know? So with that, I feel like comes a lot of isolation amongst everybody. You have Jesus feeling isolated from his disciples because... We're just not getting the message the way he wants us to. Mm. You have um, the disciples feeling isolated from one another because it feels like, you know, people are trying to take the lead and people are trying to get certain things and it's not happening. And then I would say, like, as a whole, the group probably feels super isolated from their own people as well because mm. you have the religious leaders and the Pharisees preaching a very certain type of way. And then here comes this man that's telling them, no, that's wrong. That's not how you should be behaving. So a lot of people feel alone, I think. What are some of the things you think the disciples are learning from Jesus as they follow him? Because I enjoy getting to see you guys, your characters, mm. working out what Jesus means half the time, you know, and making yeah. mistakes and applying that. But what do you feel like the disciples are taking away as they observe the life of Jesus? I would say, like, what are they learning? They're, I mean, they're maybe kind of idiots when it comes down to it. Like, maybe a little, bit, a little, a little bit, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I, I would say, like, maybe learning to put their egos aside, you know, because you have this constant headbutting that happens amongst everybody. Someone thinks that they can take point on something when that's not what Jesus wants them to do. You know, other people feel like they know things better than others. So it, it causes a lot of friction amongst the group, would you say? Yes, yes. There's a lot of, uh, I, I want to be gentle, but I think it really is just these new egos of wants, of wanting to feel special in his sight, in his presence that now uh, come forth and like a lot of the disciples and, and that they, they just try to take this opportunity while they're learning to try to gain his favor, his appointed favor in this, what they believe is a literal kingdom that he's going to build. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it, it gets a bit, a bit dicey in those things that they're learning, that they think they're learning, that they're taking away mm. when he's obviously saying something completely different, which we know because... Yeah, insight. you see what's coming down the line. So what can you tell us about season four? Are there certain bits that are highlights for you guys that you think fans are going to particularly lean into this time around? Oh, 
Sure, without giving spoilers, you know. Uh, well, was that a spoiler? Did I? No, 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 not at all, not at all. Okay, because not at all. Okay, all. Um, uh, <laughs> I, I, w I will say, for Thomas, um, one thing that kind of sticks out to me for him is actually season one and, and his introductory episode in season one when he's standing with Rayma. You know, they at the very end of of the wedding, he says to her, "I don't know what to think," mm. and I think that line is something that is sort of a uh, a through line for Thomas in season four, you know, because of this radical message that's happening, he's starting to wonder, did he make the right choice? You know, am I following the right person? Should I have just played it safe and, and, and stayed, you know, back in Teldora and whatnot. So, um, I, I would say for Thomas, that's kind of his, his journey this season. Mm. I also don't want to give anything away. That sure. was most eloquently put. Uh, all I want to say is just, uh, when you watch this new season, just have a entire box of tissues, just, allocated mm. right next to you because it mm. hurts it is the gut punch of all gut punches and then it hits you with an uppercut that you never saw coming wow and season three was already pretty emotional so that's oh. like that's a big thing oh no season three was just the the small world that was leading up to the immediate splash mountain Ooh. that this season is goodness that's a that's a good tease i, I, hope, I hope they use that in the behind the scenes like <laughs> Yeah. First, there's Jonathan Ruiz, like, ah, oh, it's going to melt your face. Right? <laughs> yeah. And then he's like, it is the small world that leads up to the inevitable Splash Mountain. We're looking for the sound bite. Yeah. <laughs> oh, exactly. I love it. I'm and sorry. No, it's great. And there's going to be, of course, a few friends, if not thousands of fans ready to watch this. What would you just say to them as a key takeaway from season four? Probably going with an open mind, you know? There might be some things that are, are challenging for people to accept or, you know, challenges their viewpoints of a story that they might have grown up with their entire lives you know i would say be open to having your mind changed that's really good i should start going first my god <laughs> well that is our time guys so thank you so much for chatting with me really appreciate it thanks laura thank you you know a lot of fans have reached out to have just it, she's a relatable character they're like that's that's me and i, I think people who have gone through darkness mm. um, can appreciate the light so much more because of that there's a gratitude that comes from that and I think she represents that they say the struggle is real I say the struggle reveals how you deal with the monster that's inside you I don't buy into the luck I put my faith in my trust in my team everything